Hi, um, so my name's Ben Hayworth, I'm the Director of Arts for Health, and this morning I'm talking to Josh, who is one of our musicians who, who uh, works for us. Josh, do you want to introduce yourself and tell us what you're, you're up to at the moment? Yeah, yeah, so um, yeah, as Ben just said, my name's Josh, and I'm currently facilitating um, three sessions in the Milton Keynes area at Campbell Centre, Topaz and Cherrywood, and uh, yeah, I'm running music sessions there on a weekly basis. Fantastic, so just tell us a little bit about your background, Josh. Yeah, so um, I was brought up a drummer and I'm now a guitarist, pianist. I've studied music at uh, London College of Music and uh, passed my um, music recording and performance degree there. Wow. And now I'm kind of implementing that into these sessions with the recording and uh, the drumming. Great. Um, so just tell us a bit about the, the people that you work with. What age groups are they? Yeah, so at Campbell, it's young adults. And uh, that can range from 18 to we've had someone up to the age of 40 there. And then Topaz, Topaz is dementia. So it's, you know, 75 plus. Yeah, I think obviously quite different groups then, aren't they? Very different dynamics. And I cater the sessions depending on who's there and mm -hmm. uh, yeah, what kind of skills they might have. Right. So. I guess one of the most important things to consider is why are we doing music sessions with people with severe and enduring mental health problems? What's the value in it? Yeah, so um, um, there's a lot of benefits to um, to, to music recording, music um, as a as a listening, and uh, also drumming. So songwriting is the one which I've noticed has had the most impact. Mm -hmm. And I've just seen like uh, because they're creating something of their own, they're they're adding their own lyrics, they're they're deciding on particular sounds, and it really increases their self esteem and uh, yeah, it gives them a lot of validation. And I mm. tend to focus on stories which they bring to the table, mm -hmm. and uh, it kind of lets them interpret those stories in a different way. And um, yeah, is, they're able to share things that they might not be able to share in just a direct oh. verbal interview. That's interesting. So, and, and have you noticed a, 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 an uplifting mood and that and that sort of thing with with the participants as well? Yeah, big time. We've had um, some great sessions where we would write the song and then we would record the song at the end of the session. Mm. And we've kept it recording and asked for their feedback, and you can hear the elation in their voices that they've created this this thing which is going to last, and they're going to take this home with them, and they're going to be able to listen to this. And uh, yeah, they're they're very very happy. And we've also been doing the Eva form. Mm -hmm. um, which um, has um, shown that post-session mood is increased, the yeah. anxiety is, redu is reduced, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, lots of lots of good benefits. Fantastic. So, for those people who who don't know what goes on in these sessions, I wonder if you could paint a picture as to what actually happens and what instruments you use and how it's structured. Yeah, for sure. So I'll talk about. Um, what I do in Campbell, Cherrywood and the Recovery College. Um, mm -hmm. I won't talk about Topaz right now. Right. But we have a set of djembes there, so we'll, we'll tend to start with a bit of just getting to know the drum. Okay. The different sounds. That's a, is that an African drum? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's, it's, it's kind of this shape, but a lot bigger. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, this is obviously pretty small. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, we just get to know the different sounds and we play together a really simple rhythm just to kind of join the group together mm. and um, and then we start to kind of look at different rhythms and then playing as a collective that's to warm up and then we usually kind of deviate into songwriting and uh, we start by just coming up with one word it could be mm -hmm. something they're feeling something that's happened to them and then we kind of create this once you started it like, it's like a snowball effect mm. suddenly people are coming with ideas and they're kind of playing with each other on on their idea basis and uh, we create a song and uh, I create the chords on the guitar mm -hmm. and then we um, put the lyrics to the song and we um, add drums, create mm -hmm. structure, mm -hmm. start recording it. And uh, it's a very efficient process. In an hour and a half, we tend to have created a song MP3 format by the end of the session they can take away. That's fantastic. And, and these people haven't really got much musical experience necessarily, have they? No, no. I, I'm surprised at how many musicians have actually <laughs> been in the sessions. There's mm. <laughs> been a lot of guitarists and singers. Oh, okay. 
which has been so you, nice. you, you, you've got somewhere to start then, I suppose, if, if people can already play. And, and I guess there's always percussion and singing and clapping and all that sort of thing if, if people are less confident. That's the beauty of the djembe is that you don't have to have any experience and you can play along on a really simple beat and feel like you're part of the group and mm -hmm. and uh, making like a difference to the sound. Sure. Um, so I guess um, my last question this morning is, where do you think this is going? What, what does the future hold for music in mental health and specifically what you're doing, do you think? Yeah, I think... Um, there's a, there's a bright future ahead for, for music therapy and songwriting therapy and drumming therapy. I think um, from what I've seen over the past four or five months working there, I've had a, quite a lot of people come to my recovery college sessions when they've mm -hmm. been discharged. Yep. People have wanted to make long journeys to come to the sessions. It just shows that there's a, a demand there for, for music. And um, yeah, like people have offered out their own pocket to pay money for these mm. sessions to be funded and one's yeah, said that they would ask their dad to kind of, kind of contribute. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we've got like a, collab a collaboration potential, which is going to happen with a London-based mental health service who have just started a recording studio. Mm -hmm. And there's going to be some dialogue there between the two groups. So there's going to quite a lot of scope for, um, yeah, creating between the cities. Sure. We're very keen on collaboration, aren't we? Partnership working is a big part of what we do. Um, I should say that uh, anybody watching this who who might want to refer themselves into one of our music sessions at Arts for Health, we do have sessions that happen outside of the um, treatment centres, but the ones we're talking about this morning are really for inpatients, aren't they, who are being seen through um, Central and North West London Foundation Trust. Um, but you can access our courses uh, at Arts for Health by uh, emailing info at artsforhealthmk.org.uk. And just letting us know what you're interested in and why you'd like to participate. But Josh, it's been great to speak to you this morning. Thank you so much for coming on the call. And I wish you the best of luck with the sessions and, and long may our partnership continue. Great. Thanks for having me. Thank you.